Welcome everyone, I'm Emery Hunt, the czar of the playbook, and now that all of the film has been watched and all of the grades are in, it's time for the Football Game Plan Scouting 2018 NFL Draft Prospect Preview. Before we get started with our prospect rankings, here's how we gather our grades and what they actually mean. First, we watch a minimum of three full games on a player, a prospect's best game, his worst game, and the best or intriguing matchup. And second, we grade on 15 key points specific to the position to equal 100 points in total. Now, here's what the grades that you'll see by a prospect's name will actually mean. Prospects that earned grades in the 90s graded out as future NFL All-Pros. Prospects in the 80s are considered future Pro Bowl players. Grades in the 70s represent solid NFL starters, and grades in the 60s are players that we believe are spot starters in the NFL. And if you notice, we don't use the word reserve or backups because we personally feel as though that there are no such thing as backups in the NFL, only starters in waiting. So without further ado, let's kick off our prospect rankings by taking a look at our top 10. Javon Williams of Georgia leads off our inside receiver rankings. His hand-eye coordination at the position was very impressive. You saw a receiver make tough catches consistently in traffic and away from his body. The athletic 6'3", 215-pound wideout will have to become a little bit more refined as a route runner, but he has the savvy and the athleticism to be a factor in a short to intermediate passing game. Devontae Boyd of UNLV is by far the best route runner of this group. He's able to consistently win off the line of scrimmage and does an excellent job of reading coverages on the fly. He's not overly elusive after the catch, but he is able to create enough space because of his route running that gives him a chance to pick up yards after the catch. Corey Robertson is a player that has a lot of upside to his game. He's an early entry into the draft and is bringing some outstanding hands to the table. I like how he's able to have that aggressive mindset at the position, especially when the ball is in the air. Robertson can handle outside duties, but I think he's best suited to play inside and be a consistent intermediate threat within an offense. You learn a lot about a player, especially a receiver, and how they work without the ball. Jester Wea out of Pitt is a polished player that consistently took every rep seriously with the Panthers. He doesn't have the great speed or elusiveness, but he knows how to get open and doesn't mind playing over the middle of the field. I like his agility and his willingness to take pride in his blocking within the running game. Looking at the rest of this list, Malik Earl out of Missouri State had a very productive career for the Bears. So did Jake Winicky out of South Dakota State. The 6'4", 218-pound Jackrabbit Winicky is very athletic and shows the above-the-rim ability teams covet inside the red zone. He had a fantastic week of practice at the East-West Shrine game. And I just like the game of both Alan Lazard and Stephen Dunbar. Both are big physical receivers that take contested catches very personally. Lazard has underrated deep speed as well. Keep an eye on Sam Boyd out of St. Augustine's University throughout this process. Boyd at 6'3", 234, has above average speed for such a bigger receiver, and some view him as a tight end prospect. I think he can function at both, which is why he's here in his inside receiver rankings. He's excellent inside the red zone and also good on shorter in-breaking routes. James Okiki of Division III Wesley has a ton of upside. He's 6'4", 227, and is very raw as a route runner, but has the raw physical skills of a guy that can function well on the outside. He's a terrific athlete and is still growing into his own as a football player. He really only played two and a half seasons of football at Wesley, and that type of upside is what scouts want to see from a prospect with his frame and skill set. Like I said before, he can play the X, the inside, and also the slot position. He eases out of his breaks very well for a guy that's a bigger wide receiver. Rounding out our inside receiver rankings are prospects 11 through 14. John Prather out of Carnegie Mellon was one of the more consistent receivers in all of Division III over the course of his career. Jalil Scott is coming off a fine week of practice at the Senior Bowl and looks to be a solid red zone option coming out of New Mexico State. Thomas Lucas of Duquesne played well all week long at the Tropical Bowl, and he's cut from the same cloth as wide receiver Sam Boyd. And Regis Sabasu had an excellent week of work at the East-West Shrine game. He's built more like an H-back and could ultimately end up there as a pro. So that's a wrap for our 2018 FBGP Scouting Draft Prospect Preview. To see more of our individual scouting reports, follow us on Twitter at FBGP Scouting and bookmark the page footballgameplan.com slash FBGP Scouting. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash footballgameplan where you can get all of our scouting videos, mock drafts, and NFL draft prospect videos. And one more thing, subscribe to us on iTunes under Football Game Plan Podcast where you can find the Scout Team Podcast where we interview 
multiple NFL draft prospects.